In 2019, the Nintendo Switch is easily one of the most popular systems on the planet. It sells millions of units, its games are always topping the charts, and really, it seems like the online community of this thing is just obsessed with trying to be the very best Nintendo gamers. But as much as I love the Switch, in my opinion, it has a very clear flaw that is a pretty major one. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today we're going to be talking about the Virtual Console and why it seems like Nintendo absolutely does not want to add it to the Nintendo Switch. Before we get into that, I do want to make a very quick announcement, which is that currently, as this video is uploaded, I am actually at QuakeCon in Dallas, Texas. So if you see me wearing this hat, please walk up and talk to me. I love getting a chance to chat with subscribers in person. But additionally, I'm going to be doing a charity stream while I'm at QuakeCon to try and save some dogs. Basically, these little cuties, like this is actually one of the ones we're going to be trying to get adopted, we're trying to get them to find some homes. So on Sunday, be sure to tune into that live stream. It's going to be very important and hopefully we get some great homes for some great pups. All right, now let's dig into the actual topic. The Nintendo Switch is easily something that managed to really break conventions. The idea of it being a handheld console system that manages to do both so well is very, very groundbreaking. But additionally, I feel like it's also managed to put itself in this weird space. Not to fans, I feel like people have managed to accept it and embrace it. Nintendo themselves, though, seems like they're very, very mixed on how to treat the Nintendo system. Now, in the past, I feel like over the course of the last decade or or decade and a half, Nintendo's been trying to do something that I very much respected, which is they sort of tried to make a blend of the old and the new. If you look at something like the Wii U or the 3DS or of course the Wii, these all had one major thing in common, which was Virtual Console, an online marketplace that allowed you to actually purchase retro games on your system to be played with current tech. Now the reason I consider this so interesting is because it managed to create this extra avenue for Nintendo, a way for them to sell their classic stuff that's already super super famous, but additionally it really kind of provided a way for us to experience these classics in a modern way way. It really gave us a chance to really show people what we grew up with, and, and it kind of made it where a lot of people now who are still only like 20 years old or very young people, these people can actually grow up knowing 2D Mario and experiencing all these adventures the same way we did. It really managed to create a very important time capsule because it was so easy to access. But in the modern day, for some reason, Nintendo is now very, very peculiar about not even wanting to really talk about their ancient, ancient past. And this, to me, is such a baffling misstep. Now, if it comes to social media, of course Nintendo will hype up the anniversary of Zelda or talk about the past of Metroid, but they don't want this old stuff mixing in with the new brand. Uh, in my opinion, this is just a personal theory, but honestly... I think that's the reason that they don't like doing anything except for these retro consoles. The microsystems like the Nintendo Classic and the SNES Classic is that these provide a way for them to sell their older catalog without accidentally mixing it with the Switch brand. Nintendo is clearly in an age now where they want everybody to think about their tech as the most cutting edge. Now the reason I say this, and it is pure speculation, is that it seems like Nintendo is currently making projects much bigger and much more ambitious than anything they have ever touched. Their stuff, anything from Splatoon 2 to Mario Odyssey, these games are tremendous. But not only that, they're obviously much, much larger than other stuff. It's things that Nintendo has never really experimented with. And I think that what they're trying to do is make sure they're still being treated seriously as a console developer. I think that Nintendo is in a weird spot now where they want to try and be something to rival the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox one. Now my problem is that I feel like this is a huge misstep. Virtual console on the Nintendo Switch is important. Now I'm not just saying that I prefer it, I'm not just saying that it'd make the money, I'm actually saying that not having it is a problem. Now here's my thing, 
I am a huge fan of nostalgia. I think that nostalgia is a very key part of our current culture. A lot of times if you look at the biggest things like comic books are perpetually being rebooted, bringing back classic storylines. Movies are being rebooted to try and relive the really cool golden ages. And even things like television shows like Stranger Things is one big nostalgia trip. But video games is a very interesting thing because, in my opinion, games are constantly just coming in ebbs and flows. People want to play the biggest, most popular current stuff, but they don't look back that much often. The one thing that really manages to get people hyped again about older stuff is when you do a big re-release or when you make it easily accessible. Now, part of nostalgia is the ability to relive your memories. But more than this, it's about something very, very essential, which is not just being able to have fun with the memories you have as a kid, but additionally, to share these memories. Memories. This definitely reminds me of a quote by Robert Krulwich. He actually is like a radio host who does a show called Radio Lab, where they essentially get to interview different scientists and talk to them about their profession. Well, Robert Krulwich was talking to somebody who is a neuroscientist who studies the inner workings of the brain, and they were talking about the process of forming and keeping memories. Something they went into is the idea of, apparently, whenever you're actually storing knowledge in your brain, it's kind of like putting something in a refrigerator. Every single time you open it up, it goes a little bit bad. So in order to keep it preserved, you need to perpetually reheat it. The analogy they make is, if you took a piece of food out of the refrigerator and kept reheating it, each little nibble of the food would of course manage to preserve that flavor a bit, but over time it's going to change. The more you look back on a memory, the more it gets altered. That's why if you manage to play a game that you haven't touched in 20 years or something, a lot of times you yourself are a little bit shocked by how much you've altered it in your brain compared to what you originally remembered. I think that there is definitely a vital part of our historic culture of gaming to not just be able to remember things, but to be able to actively play them. Now I know what you're going to say, Dreamcast guy, why aren't you busting Microsoft? Why aren't you busting Sony? They have the Xbox One, they have the PlayStation, what about their past? I think the major difference is Sony and Microsoft, yes, they have made great games. In the ancient past, they definitely have their classics. Where things are divided, though, is I definitely believe that when it comes to things like the PlayStation 1, the most iconic games, the things that are definitely remembered the longest, are the experiences that were made by third-party studios and not necessarily Microsoft themselves. These were something that were made very much beside everything else, and to me, I feel like that is a big testament to the fact that Nintendo was unique. Nintendo has made their own classics. Nintendo is out there at the forefront making Nintendo games. They made the stuff that sold their own hardware. So I feel like it's extra essential for them, since they own their own catalog, to bring it forward. Now there is something I've heard in the past that I actually believe, which is part of the reason that the Dreamcast initially got such a big fan following, is because of the bootlegs. Now you may not know this, but on the Dreamcast, obviously the games are dirt cheap. A lot of us bought them physically. When you open it up, of course, it's got this disc called a GD-ROM. What you may not know is that people very quickly figured out that you could actually burn Dreamcast games very, very easily. You could create duplicates. I did this. I will fully admit that I own a lot of duplicates. What I do a lot of times is I own the real game, I'll put the real game in storage, and I'll make a duplicate because they're just that easy to create. Because of these duplicates, almost everybody who bought a Dreamcast instantly had access to thousands and thousands of games. It made it where anybody who wanted to be a Dreamcast collector could. This additionally meant that all the really rare, hard-to-find games now had easy access. People were able to actually build an entire catalog of great memories of a console that had died. I truly believe that part of the reason the Dreamcast managed to explode into such a cult classic is because of bootlegging, because of the easy access. 
the Nintendo Switch really should be digging into that. The Nintendo Switch should really be trying to rely and make itself the chimera it wants to be. I feel like the Nintendo Switch is very, very brilliant. I'm still just absolutely blown away by how it managed to win so many of us over. The idea of making a slightly underpowered console that can be a handheld on the go, the fact that they're releasing new versions that are handheld only or have an extended battery life, the fact that I can sit down with my friends and play Mario Kart instantly at a party with just popping off the controllers and have motion control options or if I want to play it a standard way, this is a testament to how much Nintendo is willing to think outside the box. But the final step is still important. Go that one last nudge further. Bring Virtual Console to the system, that way this becomes the universal system you clearly want. Make the Nintendo Switch the greatest Nintendo system ever by giving it full backwards compatibility. Sell us Game Boy Advance games, sell us GameCube games, sell us everything that you know we want. Because it's going to be more than just great profit, it's going to be great for gaming history. Thanks so much for watching gamers, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. And also, in the comment section down below, tell me the games you want to see on Nintendo Switch, because come on, let's have a nostalgia party down in the comments. What am I doing? Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.